Oh have... my gosh, that was the worst space to change. Uh oh. What? what? Everybody had yeah, we were all. Oh, Pericles. And oh. Sa yeah, Pericles. I was like, what? <laughs> oh, we had I so many that. actors and so many costume changes in a phone booth. It was ridiculous. Well, in particular, the fact that for the last scene, everybody had to change back into mundane. Mundane, so yes. Everybody. Yeah. Yeah. That was a. And then we had to worry about. What, oh gosh, what was her name with the Chopins? Oh, uh, Ariane. Ariane and the Chopins. Oh my gosh, yeah. and the full, uh, full Italian. Actors, are we met? Aye. Aye. Speech, 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 and coat. <laughs> I learned in this letter that Don Pedro of Aragon comes this night to Messina. He was very near by this, not three leagues off. And I find here that he hath bestowed much honor upon a young Florentine named Claudio. Claudio. Oh. <laughs> well deserved was he, and much deserved was he, and well remembered by Don Pedro. He hath borne himself beyond the promise of his age, doing in the figure of a lamb the feats of a lion. Hurrah! <laughs> I pray you, is Signor Montanto returned from the wars or no? I know none of that name, lady. There was none in the army of any sort. My cousin means Signor Benedict of Padua. Oh. He's returned, and as pleasant as ever he was. <laughs> I pray you, how many hath he killed and eaten in these wars? But how many hath he killed? For indeed, I promise to eat all of his killing. <laughs> Faith, niece, you tax Signor Benedict too much, but he'll be meet with you. I doubt it not. He hath done good service in these wars, and a good soldier too. And a good soldier to a lady. But what is he to a lord? A lord to a lord, a, a, a man to a man, stuffed with all honorable virtue. It is indeed so. He is no less than a stuffed man. <laughs> you must, sir, uh, excuse my niece. There is kind of a merry war betwixt her and Signor Benedict. Uh, they never meet, but that there's a skirmish of wit between them. Well, alas, he gets nothing by that. In our last conflict, four of his five wits went halting off, and now is the whole man governed with one. <laughs> Who is his companion now? He hath every month a new sworn brother. I see the gentleman is not in your book, lady. Uh, no, and he were, I would burn my study. <laughs> but I pray you, who is his companion? Is, is there no young squire now that will make a voyage with him to the devil? <laughs> he is most often in the company of the right noble Claudio. Oh, Lord. God help the noble Claudio if he have caught the Benedict. <laughs> it will cost him a thousand pounds ere it be cured. <laughs> I will keep friends with you, lady. Do good friend. <laughs> Bing. Don Pedro is approaching. Good Signor Leonardo, are you come to meet your trouble? Uh, it is the fashion of the world to avoid at all costs, yet here you are to embrace it. Never trouble came to my house in the form of your grace, for trouble being gone, comfort should remain. But when you depart from me, sorrow abides, and happiness takes his leave. Well, you embrace your charge too willingly. Uh, but I, I believe this is your daughter? Her mother hath many times told me so. <laughs> Were you in doubt, sir, that you asked her? <laughs> Why no, Signor Benedict, for you then were but a child. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have the fool of it, Benedict, for the, truly the lady doth father herself. Uh, be happy, lady, for you are very like your honorable father. If Signor Leonato be her father, <laughs> she would not have his head on her shoulders for all Messina as like him as she is. It's a wonder you will still be talking, Signor Benedict. Nobody marks you. What? My lady disdain. I 
few men living. Is it possible Justine should die when she hath such meat food to feed it as Signor Benedict? Courtesy itself must convert to disdain if you come in her presence. <laughs> and is courtesy a turncoat? But it is certain that I am loved of all ladies, only you excepted. And I would I could find it in my heart to have not a hard heart, for truly I love none. A dear happiness to women. They would else have been troubled with a pernicious suitor. I thank God in my cold blood I am of your humor for that. I had rather hear my dog bark at a crow than a man swear he loves me. God keep your ladyship still in that mind, so some gentleman or other shall escape a predestinate scratched face. <laughs> Scratching could not make it worse, and twere such a face as yours were. Oh, well, you are a rare parrot keeper. A bird of my tongue is better than a beast of yours. Oh, I would that your horse had the speed of my, my horse had the speed of your tongue, and so great a continuer. Oh, but come your ways, in God's name, I have done. You always end with a jade trick. I know you of old. Uh, Benedict, uh, Claudio, uh, my good friend, Sir, uh, Signor Leonardo, hath invited you all. I tell him that we plan to stay but a month, but he preys upon some circumstance that will detain us further. If you swear, my lord, you shall not be forsworn. If you swear, my lord, you shall not be forsworn. Why? Let me bid you welcome, my lord. Oh, uh, yeah. Right. This guy. If you swear, my lord, you shall not be forsworn. And let me bid you welcome, my lord. Being... Resolve, being resolved to your cousin the prince, your brother the prince, I owe you all duty. I am a few words. I thank you. Please it your grace, lead on. Your hand, Leonardo. We go together. Will we be going? I can't remember. We are going inside. Thou note the daughter of Signor Leonardo? I noted her not, but I've looked on her. Uh, is she not a modest young lady? Do you question me as a honest man for my simple, true judgment, or would you ask, or would you have me answer after my custom as a professed tyrant to their sex? Uh, I pray thee, speak in sober judgment. In faith, methinks she's too low for high praise, uh, too brown for fair praise, and too little for great praise. Only this commendation can I afford her. That were she other than she is, she were unhandsome, and that she is no other but that she is, I do not like her. Thou thinkest I am a sport. I pray thee, tell me truly how thou likest her. Would you buy her that you inquire after her? Can the world buy such a jewel? Oh, yea, and a case to put it in. In mine eyes, she is the prettiest lady that ever I saw. I can see yet without spectacles, and yet I see no such matter. Uh, there's her cousin, and she were not possessed of a fury. Exceeds her as much in beauty as does the first of May does the last of December. But I hope you have no intent to turn husband, have you? I, uh, I, I have sworn to the contrary, but, but uh, if, if Hero would be my wife... Oh, that it should come to this. Shall I never see a bachelor of three score again? <laughs> what secret hath detained you here that you have not followed on to Leonardo's? Oh, I would your grace would constrain me to tell. Oh, I, by thy allegiance. On my allegiance? Oh, mark you, on my allegiance. He is in love. Oh. With who? Oh, oh, that is your grace's part. Uh, mark how short his answer is. With Hero, Leonardo's short daughter. <laughs> well, if you love the lady, then uh, I know she is very well worthy. I can look it up, right? Amen if you love her, for the lady is very well worthy. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, amen if you love her, for the lady is very well worthy. Mm -hmm. uh, my, my lord, my liege, uh, you may do me good. Is that a skip? You line? speak this to fetch me Shit. in, my lord. You speak this to fetch me in, my lord. I but speak my thought. I, and in faith, I spoke mine. And in my two faiths and two troths, my lords, I spoke mine. That I love her, I feel. Well, that she is worthy, I know. That I neither know how she should be loved, or, or, line. 
That I neither feel how she should be loved. That I neither feel how she should be loved, nor know how should she be worthy, is the opinion that fire cannot melt out of me. I will die on it at the stake. Sorry, I know that's me. Ah, right. Uh, thou wast ever the obstinate heretic in despite of beauty. That a woman conceived me, I thank her. That she brought me up, I likewise give her most humble thanks. Mm. But that I should hang up my bugle in an invisible baldric, <laughs> all women shall pardon me. I shall see thee, ere I die, look pale with love. Oh, with anger, my lord, with sickness, or in hunger, not with love. Uh, well, as they say, in time the savage bull doth bear the yoke. Oh, the savage bull may. But if ever the sensible Benedict bear it, pluck off the bull's horns and set them in my <laughs> forehead and cut off my legs. And let me be vilely painted and written as they write in great letters, here is a good horse to ride. Let them signify under my sign, here you may see Benedict the married man. Well, you will temporize with the hours. Uh, in the meantime, good Signor Benedict, Repair to Leonardo's, and commend me to him, and tell him that I will not fail him at dinner, for he hath made great preparations. I have almost matter in me for such an episage, and so I leave you. <laughs> <sighs> my liege, uh, your highness now may do me good. Uh, <clears throat> my love is thine to teach. Teach it any hard lesson that will do thee good. Hath Leonardo any son, my lord? Uh, no child, but hero. She's his only heir. I'm sorry, do I have, I think I have more in that. Dost thou affect yeah. her, Claudio? Yeah. Dost thou affect her, Claudio? My lord, before you went onward on this, on this endless journey, uh, I looked upon her with a soldier's eyes, saying, I, I liked her, ere I went to wars. If thou dost love fair hero, then cherish it. And, and I will break with her father, and she shall be thine. And thou shalt have her. Sorry, that's probably the cue you're listening for. Uh, wine, please. How sweetly, How sweetly you do minister to love that no loves that love knows. That I'm, love that I'm no sorry. loves grief by his How sweetly complexion. You do, how sweetly you do minister to love that no loves grief by his complexion. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know we shall have reveling tonight. I will assume thy part in some disguise and tell Hero that I am Claudio, and I will unclasp in her bosom my amorous tail with such force that it shall take her hearing prisoner. God, I have that. Unclasp her hearing prisoner with the force of my amorous tail. Then, yeah, then after, I will break with her father and... She shall be thine. Come, let us put it practice into practice practically. How now, sister? Brother, I can tell you strange news that you yet dreamt not of. Are they good? The prince and Count Claudio were thus much overheard by a man of mine. The prince discovered of Claudio that he loved my niece, your daughter, and meant to acknowledge it this night in a dance. And if he found her accordant, he meant instantly to break with you of it. Hath he any wit who told you this? A good sharp fellow. Mm. We shall hold it as a dream till it appear itself. But I will acquaint my daughter with all, that she may be better prepared for an answer, if, peradventure, this be true. Go you and tell her of it. A good year, my lord. Why are you thus out of measure sad? I cannot hide what I am. I must be sad when I have cause and smile at no man's jest, eat when I have stomach and wait on no man's leisure. 
I sleep when I am drowsy and attend on no man's business. Laugh when I am merry and call no man in his humor. Yea, but you must not make the full show of this till you may do it without conformance. You have of late stood out against your brother, and he hath taken you newly into his grace, where it is impossible you should not take true root by, but by the fair weather that you make yourself. Ah, to be a canker in a hedge than a rose in his grace. Though it cannot be said that I am a flattering, honest man, it must not be denied, but that I am a plain-dealing villain. I am trusted with a muzzle and enfranchised with a clog. Therefore, I have decreed not to sing in my cage. If I had my mouth, I would bite. If I had my liberty, I would do my liking. In the meantime, let me be that I am, and seek not to alter me. Can you make no use of your discontent? Oh, I make all use of it, for I use it only. What news, Baracchio? I came yonder from a great supper. The prince, your brother, is royally entertained by Leonato. And I can give you intelligence and uh, intelligence of an intended marriage? Yes. And I can give you intelligence of an intended marriage. Will it serve for any model to build mischief on it? What is he for a fool that betroths himself to unquietness? Mary, it is your brother's right hand. Who? The most exquisite Claudia? Even he. Oh, a proper squire. <laughs> Who? Which way looks he? Mary on Hero, the daughter and heir. Ooh, a very forward march chick. I overheard it agreed upon. I overheard it agreed upon that the prince should woo Hero and having obtained her, give her to Count Claudio. Come, come, let us thither. This may prove food to my displeasure. That young startup hath all the glory of my overthrow. If I can cross him in any way, I will bless myself in every way. You are both sure and will assist? To the death, my lord. <sighs> Let us to the banquet. Their chair is the greater that I am subdued. We'll Shall we go see what is to be done? We'll wait upon your lordship. Was not Count John here at supper? I saw him not. How melancholy that gentleman looks. I can never see him, but I am heartburned an hour after. <laughs> he does have a melancholy disposition. He were an excellent man that were made just in the midway between him and Benedict. One is too like an image and says nothing, and the other too like my lady's eldest son, ever more tattling. By my shock, niece, thou will never get thee a husband if thou be so true to thy tongue. When fair. She's too cursed. Oh, too cursed is more than cursed. I shall lessen God's sending that way, for it is said, God sends a cursed cow short horns, but to a cow too cursed, he sends none. Uh, so by being so cursed, God sends you no horn? <laughs> for the witch blessing, I am at God upon my knees every morning and evening. <laughs> well, niece, I trust you will be guided by your father. Yes, in faith. It is my cousin's duty to make curtsy and say, Father, as it please you. But for all that, cousin, let him be a handsome fellow, or else make another curtsy and say, Father, as it please me. Well, niece, I hope to see you one day fitted with a husband. Not till men make, not till God make men of some other metal than earth. Daughter, remember what I told you. If the prince doth approach you in this manner, or doth solicit you in this manner, you know your answer. The revelers are entering, sister. Make good room. <laughs> Lady, will you walk about with your friend? So you walk softly and look sweetly. Line. And say nothing. And say nothing. I'm yours for the walk, especially when I walk away. Uh, with me in your company. I may flank. I may say so when I please. I may say so when I please. And when please you? When I like your favor. For God defend the lute should be like the case. Well, 
speak softly, speak of love. Will you not tell, tell me who told you so? Uh, no, you must pardon me. Nor will you not tell me who you are? Uh, not now. And I was disdainful, and that I had my good wit out of the hundred merry tales. Oh, this was Signor Benedict that said so. What's he? Why, did he never make you laugh? Oh, I pray, tell me, what is he? Oh, he is the prince's jester, a very dull fool. Only his gift is in, by, is in devising impossible slanders. None but libertines delight in him, and the commendation is not in his wit, but in his villainy. For he both pleases men and angers them, and then they laugh at him and beat him. I am sure he is in the fleet. I would he had boarded me. When I know the gentleman, I'll tell him what you oh, say. Do, do. Oh, we must follow the leaders. In every good thing. Oh, yea, if they lead to any ill, I'll leave them at the next turning. Sure, my brother is amorous on hero and has withdrawn her father to break with him about it, and all the ladies follow her, and one visor remains. And that is Claudio. I know him by his bearing. Are you not Signor Benedict? <laughs> you know me well. I am he. <laughs> Signor, you are very near my brother in his love. Mm -hmm. He is amorous on Hero, I pray you. Dissuade him from her. She is no equal for his birth. You may do the part of an honest man in it. How know you he loves her? I heard him swear his affection. Oh. Oh, oh. Oh, uh, so did I, too. Uh, he swore he would marry her tonight. Oh. Mm. Let us to supper. Must answer I, in the name of Benedict, but hear these ill news with the ears of Claudio. Tis certain so, the prince woos for himself. <coughs> Friendship is constant in all things, save the offices and affairs of love. Oh, Messina. Oh, Count Claudio. <laughs> yes, yeah, same. <laughs> Come, go with me. The prince hath got your hero. Oh, I wish him joy of her. Oh, do you think the prince would have misused you thus? I pray you leave me. Oh, oh now you strike like the blind man. Twas the boy who stole the meat, and you'll beat the post. <laughs> it will not be. I'll leave you. Alas, poor hurt fowl. <laughs> now will he creep into sedges. But that my lady Beatrice should know me, and yet not know me. Princess Fool. Huh. Well, maybe that I go under that sign because I am, uh, because I am, uh, uh Mary. Uh, because I am Mary. Huh. I am not so reputed. It is the base disposition of Beatrice that puts the world into her person and thus puts me out. I'll be revenged on her as I may. Uh, uh, now, Signor, where is the Count? Have you seen him? I did, my lord, uh, though I found him melancholy. Uh, I told him true. In fact, I thought that your grace had got the good will of this young hero. Mm -hmm. the, the Lady Beatrice has much wrong her, has hath a quarrel with you. To, the gentleman that danced with her told her that she is much wronged by you. Oh, 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 oh. oh she misused me past the endurance of a block. An oak with but one green leaf would have answered her. My very advisor began to assume light to scold with her. She told me, not thinking that I had been myself, that I was the prince's jester, that I, duller than a great thaw, hung the jest upon the chest with such impossible conveyance upon me that I stood like a man at a mark with a whole army shooting at me. She speaks poniards and every word stabs. Talk down of her. Oh, look, here she comes. <laughs> <laughs> Will your grace commend me any service to the world's end? I will 
go on any errand to the Antipodes that you devise to send me on. I will uh, uh, fetch a toothpick from the furthest inch of Asia. I will bring you the length of Prester John's foot. Do you any embassage anywhere? Pluck a hair from the beard of the great of Duke Frederick of Holland's beard. Rather, rather than hold three words conference with this harpy. You have no employment for me? None but to enjoy your good company. Oh, God. Here's a dish I love not. I cannot endure my lady tongue. <laughs> oh, come, lady, come. You have lost the, the heart of Signor Benedict. Indeed, my lord. He lent it me a while, and I gave him use for it. A double heart for his single one. Marry once before he won it of me with false dice, therefore your grace may well say I have lost it. <laughs> well, you have put him down, lady, you have put him down. So I would not he should do me, my lord, lest I should prove the mother of fools. <laughs> I have brought Count Claudio, who you sent me to see. Well, how now, Count? Uh, why for are you sad? Not sad, my lord. Uh, how then, sick? Neither, my lord. The Count is neither sad, nor sick, nor merry, nor well, but civil, Count. Civil as an orange, and something of that jealous complexion. Well, in faith, lady, I think you're blazoned to be true, but if it be so, his conceit is false. Here, Claudio, I have wooed for thee, and won hero. I have broken with her father with, for thee, and her, his good will obtained. Name the date of the marriage, and God give thee joy. <laughs> Count, take of me my daughter, and with her my fortunes. His grace hath made has his grace hath made the match, and all grace say amen to it. Speak, Count, tis your cue. S silence is the most perfect herald of joy. I, I would be little happy if I could say how much. My lady, as you are mine, I am yours. I I give away myself to you as ill upon the exchange. Speak, cousin, or if you cannot, stop his mouth with a kiss and let him not speak neither. <coughs> In faith, lady, you have a merry heart. Eh, hey, my lord, I thank it, poor fool. It keeps on the windy side of care. Oh, my cousin tells him in his ear that he is in her heart. And so she doth, cuz. <laughs> and so she doth. I know, but they need this money. Do we need the money? We Clear. need to be elsewhere. I want to clarify. So she done. Yeah. Yeah. So she done. Yes. Good <laughs> Lord for Alliance. <laughs> Thus goes everyone to the world but I, and I am Sunday. I may sit in a corner and cry, hey ho for a husband. <laughs> oh, Lady Beatrice, I will find you one. I had rather have one of your father's getting. Half your grace, ne'er a brother like you. Your father got excellent husbands if a maid could come by them. Uh, wouldst thou have me, lady? No, my lord. Unless I might have another for working days. <laughs> your grace is far too costly to wear every day. I beseech your grace, pardon me. I was born to speak all mirth and no matter. Well, your silence most offends me. Uh, to be merry becomes you, for out of question you were born in a merry hour. No, sure, my lord. My mother cried. But then there was a star danced, and under that was I born. Cousins! God give you joy. Uh, niece, uh, would you look into those things I told you of? I cry your mercy, uncle. By your grace's pardon. By my troth, a pleasantly spirited lady. No, oh, there is very little of the melancholy element in her, my lord. She is never sad, but when she sleeps and... Not even then, for I have heard my daughter say of, that she often dreams of unhappiness and then wakes herself with laughing. <laughs> well, she cannot bear to hear tell of a husband. 
<laughs> no, my lord. She mocks all her wooers out of suit. She were an excellent wife for Benedict. <laughs> Oh, my lord. My lord. <laughs> they, if they were married but a week, they would talk themselves mad. Claudio, when mean you to go to the church? Tomorrow, my lord. Time goes on crutches till love have all its rights. Uh, not till Monday, my son, which is but three day hence, and a time too soon, too, to answer all things in my mind. I warrant thee, Claudio, the time will not go dully by us. I intend to undertake one of Hercules' labors, which is to bring the Lady Beatrice and Signor Benedict into a mountain of affection one with the other. Uh, I would fain have it a match, and I doubt not to fashion it with that your three helps. My lord, I am with you, though it cost me ten nights watching. <laughs> And I, my lord. And you too, gentle hero? Mine. I will do any modest office. I will do any modest office, my lord, to help my cousin to a good match. Benedict is not the, mo the most unhopefulest of husbands that I know. <laughs> I will teach you how to humor your, your... I will teach you how to humor your cousin that she fall in love with Benedict. And with your two helps, we'll practice on Benedict... So, uh, we'll practice on Benedict so that, in despite of his quick wit and his queasy stomach, he shall fall in love with Beatrice. If we can do this, Cupid will no longer be, a, will no longer be an archer. His glory shall be ours. We will be the only love gods. <laughs> Come, let me tell, tell you of my drift. So, the Count Claudio shall marry the daughter of Leonardo. Yea, my lord, but I can cross it. Any, any bar, any cross, any impediment shall be medicinal to me. I am sick with displeasure to him, and whatsoever comes to thwart his affection ranges evenly with mine. How canst thou cross this marriage? I think I told your lordship a year since how much I am in the favor of Margaret, the winning gentlewoman to hero. I remember. I can at any un any unseasonable at the door of the night, appoint her to lean my to look out her at her lady's window. Uh, to look out her lady's window. And what life is in that to be the death of this marriage? The poison of that lies in mutual temper. Go you to the prince, your brother. Spare not to tell him how he has wronged his honor in marrying the renowned Claudio to a contaminated stale such as one hero. And what proof shall I make of that? Proof enough to misuse the prince to vex Claudio, to undo Hero, and kill Leonardo. <clears throat> I do much wonder that one man, seeing how another is a fool when he dedicates his behavior to love, become the object of his own scorn by falling in love. Such a man is Claudio. I have known when he had no music in him but the drum and the fife. Now he'd rather hear the tabor and the pipe. He was wont to speak plain and to the purpose, as an honest man and a soldier. Now he has turned orthography. His words are a very fantastical banquet. So many strange dishes. May I be converted and see with those eyes? I cannot tell. Uh, I think not. One woman is... Fair, yet I am well. Another is virtuous, yet I am well. Another is wise, yet I am well. But until all these graces be in one woman, <laughs> one woman shall not come in my grace. Rich she shall be, <laughs> that's certain. Uh, wise, or I'll none. Uh, virtuous, or I'll never cheapen her. Uh, fair, or I'll not look on her. Uh, mild, or come not near me. Uh, a good discourse, an excellent musician. And her hair be whatever color pleases God. <laughs> oh, <laughs> the prince and Monsieur Love. I will hide me. See where Benedict hath hid himself. <laughs> <laughs>
Oh, uh, very well, my lord. <coughs> uh, come hither, Leonardo. What was it you told me of today, that your niece Beatrice is in love with Signor Benedict? Ah! I did not think that a lady would have loved any man. No, nor I neither. But most wonderful that she doth dote on Signor Benedict, uh -huh. who she seem in all outward behaviors to abhor. <laughs> Is it possible? Sits the wind in that corner? I know not what to think of it. Line. But she, but that she loves. Oh, but that she loves Signor Benedict with an enraged affection. It is beyond the infinite of thought. I, I would have thought her soul was invincible to all assaults of affection. I would have sworn it had, my lord, especially against Benedict. Maybe she doth counterfeit. <laughs> God, counterfeit! There was never a counterfeit of passion so come near the life of passion as she discovers it. Well, why? What signs of passion does she show? Uh, uh, what effects, my lord? She will see... Uh, you heard my daughter tell her how. <laughs> Indeed, she did. I should think this is a go, but the senior Leonardo speaks it. Knavery cannot sure hide himself in such reverence. Hath she made her affections known to Benedict? No, and <laughs> she swears she never will. It's her torment. It is true, indeed. Your daughter says, Shall I? She says, <laughs> That I've so oft bitten him in scorn, <laughs> speak to him and tell him that I love him. And then, and then down upon her knees she falls and weeps, <laughs> sobs, beats her breast, pulls out her hair, prays, curses. Oh, sweet Benedict! God! She doth indeed. My, my daughter says so. And the ecstasy hath so much overborne her but that my daughter is sometimes afeard. She will do a desperate outrage to herself. But, it is very true. Uh, it were good that Benedict knew of it by someone or other if she will not discover it herself. Uh, to what end, my lord? I, he would make but sport of it and, and torment the poor lady worse. Uh, she's an excellent sweet lady, and she is virtuous. And she is exceedingly wise. In, <laughs> in everything but loving Benedict. <laughs> <laughs> I am sorry for her, as I have just cause, being her uncle. I would she had bestowed this dotage on me. Uh, I would have forgone all other respects and made her half myself. I pray you, will you tell Benedict of it and hear what he will say? Oh, uh, never tell him. Were it good, thank you. Never tell him, my lord. Let him wear it out, uh, but with good counsel. We jump. Yeah, we jump somewhere. Hero thinks surely she will die if he Oh, loves my not. goodness. Hero thinks course. surely she will die if he love her not. And she will die if she, if she will die ere she make her love known. And she will die if he woo her, rather than she would bait one breath of her accursed cosmos. Uh, she doth well. If she should make tender of her love, tis very possible he'll scorn it, for the man hath a contemptible spirit. <sighs> well, I am sorry for your niece. Shall we go seek Benedict and tell him of her love? Oh, never tell him, my lord. Let him wear it out, but, but with good counsel. No, nay, that's impossible. Uh, she may wear out her heart first. Well, we will hear of it by your daughter. Let it cool the while. I love Benedict well, but I could wish him to modestly examine himself and uh, to see how much he is unworthy so good a lady. <laughs> uh, um, my lord, will you walk? Dinner is ready. My lord, if, if he don't not on this, that's an assignment. No worries. If he don't not on, if he don't not on her upon <laughs> this, I'll never trust my expectations. <sighs> Let there be the same net spread for for. Uh, let there be the same net spread for Beatrice, and that must your daughter and her gentlewoman carry. Let us send her to call him in to dinner. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's possible? Uh, right, why, why are you saying that way? Uh, it can be no yeah. trick. This can be no trick. The conference was sadly born. They, they have the word of it, the truth of it from Hero. They seem to pity the lady. It seems their affections have their full bent. Love me. Well, it must be requited. Oh, I hear how I am censured. 
They say that I will bear myself proudly if I perceive the love come from her. They also say that she would rather die than give any outward sign of affection. Oh, I must not seem proud. Uh, uh, happy are those who can hear their defects and set them to mending. Uh, they say the lady is fair. It is true, I can bear them witness. And that she is virtuous. Uh, tis so, I cannot reprove it. And that she is wise, <laughs> but for loving me. By my troth, it is no addition to her wit, nor any great argument of her folly, for I would be horribly in love with her. It's true that I may have some small quirks and remnants of wit broken on me for having railed so long against marriage, but doth not the appetite alter? The man loves the meat in his youth that he cannot endure in his age. Shall these quips and sentences and paper bullets of the brain awe a man from the career of his humor? No! The world must be peopled. When I said that I would tie a bachelor, I never thought I should live till I were married. Oh, comes Lady Beatrice. Oh, by this day, she's a fair lady. I, I do spy some marks of love on her. Against my will, I am sent to bid ye come in to dinner. Oh, fair Beatrice, I thank you for, uh, thank ye for your pains. I took no more pains for those thanks than you take pains to thank me. If it had been painful, I would not have come. You take pleasure in the message, then? Yea, just so much as you may take upon a knife's point. <laughs> have no stomach, senor. Fare you well. Against my will, I am sent to bid thee come in to dinner. There's a double meaning in that. <laughs> I took no more pains for these thanks than you took pains to thank me. Well, that's as much to say. Any pains that you take are as easy as thanks. Oh, if I do not pity her, I am a villain. Oh, I will go get her picture. Now, <laughs> <laughs> Ursula, when Beatrice hath come, our talk must only be of Benedict. Let it be thy part. Mine. When I do name him, let it be no. thy part to praise him more than ever man did merit. When I do name him, let it be thy part to praise him more than any man did ever merit. My part will to be well to my part will be to speak. My part will be lying. My talk to thee must be how. My talk to thee must be how Benedict is sick in love with Beatrice. Now begin. Fear you not my part of the dialogue, madam. No, truly, Ursula, she is too disdainful. I know her spirits are as coy and haggard as, at coy and wild as haggards of the rock. But are you sure that Benedict loves Beatrice so entirely? So says the prince.